Hey friends, this is a bonus for you. Not from Psalms, not from the Old Testament, but from one of the books in the New Testament, which I have already, I've actually read it to you two times, the whole book, once before I started the read through the Bible together in 2023, and once as we read through the Bible in 2023 and it's coming it's just three verses I'm going to share right now there's a whole lot more relating to the same subject that a lot of people a lot of people who call themselves Christian do not believe and the last video I did reading I think it was the 35th chapter of the book of Numbers. At the end of that video, I alluded to this. I have studied this from, from the time I first became a Christian 20, 20 or 21 years ago. I don't know why God put this on my heart to read. I'm talking about the whole doctrine itself, not just the three verses I'm going to share with you shortly. I'm talking about the whole doctrine. I had never heard of it before. I was raised in a Baptist church. I was, my, my parents were very strong servants of the Lord. I just didn't believe all that that I thought was nonsense until I was 51 years of age. <clears throat> and as soon as I got saved, this is some of the stuff that saved me and something that I guess the Holy Spirit put in me to study because it sure wasn't taught at the Baptist church. And y'all, if you go back to the Baptist Confession of Faith of 1789, the year 1789, or maybe it's 1689, I can't remember, but it was a few years before I was born, for sure. This doctrine was in there, written exactly as it's written in God's Holy Word, which is inerrant. So how can a true Christian believe parts of this word and not other parts of it. I don't think it's possible. I don't know. I'm not a teacher. I'm not a preacher. I am a person that studies the Bible with prayer, asking the Holy Spirit to tutor me and to guide me and to teach me every time I pick up this book because I don't want to learn it or teach it or share it. Uh, falsely the judgment of God will be harsh very harsh on anyone who twists the words in this book so I'm not going to do any teaching here I'm just going to share three verses from the King James Version of God's holy word and this those three verses and I'm gonna come back and share a lot more with you soon very soon because this is something and, and there's other doctrines that I need to share also because people do not believe they want to make this book into a book that's going to tickle their ears and satisfy their heart. The unadulterated Word of God will satisfy your heart and your soul for all eternity. So don't be trying to tell me that parts of it is not right, because all of it is right. Every jot and every tittle
You know, I cannot see for others. I cannot learn for others. I cannot believe for others. All I can do is point them to the truth and with much prayer pray that the Holy Spirit opens their eyes, removes the scales from their eyes, and removes the deafness from their ears and softens their stone cold heart so they can understand and see that everything in here is true, whether you were taught it as truth or not, whether you believe it or as truth or not, everything in here is true. Romans 8, verses 28, 29, and 30. It says, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are, what, the called according to his purpose, for whom he, talking about God, did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that we might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. I said I was going to read three verses, and I just did, but I'm going to add the next verse also. What shall we say to these things? But there ain't nothing we can say about them, friends, except share them exactly as they were written in God's holy word. And believe them, believe every letter of every word I just read to you, because they were put there by God himself. They're, they're not difficult to understand. It's not words we're not already familiar with. Just a lot of people, most people, do not want a God that preaches this. If you don't want that God, you don't have salvation, friend. A lot of people, and the, oh, I can't remember when, fifth, sixth, seventh generation, uh, not generation, century there's a man named Calvin that taught this and Luther taught it and Augustus taught it a lot of old time preachers preached it taught it anyway some somehow some way this doctrine that is all over the Bible and I'm going to share it all with you eventually inspired, written by God, spoken by God, inspired by God, got attributed to a man named John Calvin. John Calvin did not write one letter of the Bible. He did share the Bible exactly as it is written. And that's what I'm doing. Anyway, the, the this group of people started referring to it as Calvinism. It's not Calvinism. John Calvin preached the word as it is written, as I just read to you. So how it got attributed to him, I got no idea. I guarantee you those people that did that 
more than likely never knew God because they were following false preachers, false teachers. What's in the Word needs to be shared. And what I just read to you is exactly what God's Holy Word says. And I'm going to read it to you again. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Y'all, do a research. Go to an online concordance. Or just do a search online in the Bible, not in a speech, not in a sermon, not anywhere, but in the Bible for the words election, called, predestinate, predestination, and see what all verses those words are in. I guarantee you, you're going to be surprised how often those words are taught in the Bible. And again, I emphasize to you, do not go to any YouTube videos regarding them. Do not go to any sermons that are written, including those words. Go to the Bible and look at those words. People believe man not knowing the Bible. You need to know the Bible. And the Holy Spirit, our comforter, is also our tutor. If you don't believe in predestination, you do not believe God's holy word. And I don't want this message to tick anybody off. I don't want anybody getting angry at it. I do want you to read the Bible and believe what the Bible says. Forget all these men. Forget all those men. If you want the truth from a preacher, go to John MacArthur or Paul Washer or Sinclair Ferguson. Uh, last, his last name is Lawson. I think it's either Paul. Paul, uh, I can't remember. But his last name is Lawson or C. Sproul. Those guys know the Bible better than anybody I know. Some of them are still alive, some are gone. Those guys' videos are safe to watch because they teach the truth. There's others. I wouldn't watch one second of their sermons. But those are, those are safe. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn born among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say then? What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Y'all are trying to save yourself. You can't do it. I just read to you. I love you, friends. I, this love I have for you was put in my heart for you to point the way to Jesus who did everything for us to be saved. We cannot save ourselves. 
Jesus did it all. You've got to believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I am very concerned for people I love dearly because evidently they do not believe all of God's word. You got to believe all of it or believe none of it. You cannot pick and choose. This is not a buffet line. You cannot go and pick this and pick that and pick some of this. You got to take it all, friends. Even the parts that you have been taught are not true. Everything in here is true. You believe it or you don't believe it. Those of you that don't believe it are in my prayers and heavy, heavy, heavy on my heart. I love you, but that doesn't matter. God loves you, and he wants you believing the truth, not the false crap of the world.